Hi, I'm Amber Updike. And I'm Cora Sola. And this is BuzzFeed Unfigured Out. <laughs> For today's mystery, we will be covering the Alphabet Murders. Also known as the Double Initial Murders. The Alphabet Murders took place from 1971 to 1973 in Rochester, New York. Three young girls were raped and strangled. The case got its name from the fact that each of the girls' first and last names started with the same letters and that the bodies were found in towns that started with the same letter as the girl's first and last name. For example, Carmen Cologne was found in Chile. Wanda Walkowitz was in Webster, and Michelle Mainza was in the town of Macedon. Okay, we're gonna go into depth now. Carmen Cologne, aged 10, lived with her grandparents when she disappeared, November 16, 1971. She was last seen leaving a drugstore on West Main Street near her Brown Street house. She had been sent on an errand to pick up a prescription. She was found two days later, 12 miles from where she was last seen by two teenage boys. We're bicycling along the streams road in Riga. Although found in a gully lying against a rock in the town of Riga, the village of Churchville is the town center of population and the town of Chile is nearby. She had been beaten, raped, and strangled with fingernail marks scarring her neck and much of her body. Even more troubling, reports came in later from drivers who said they had spotted a semi-nude girl running along Highway 490, westbound about a mile east of Riga. Drivers reported that they had seen Carmen running with a blue car backing up the shoulder behind her. Wanda Walkwoods, aged 11, disappeared April 2nd, 1973 found the next day in the town of Webster off State Route 104, seven miles from Rochester. Wanda was sent to, sent to the Con Key Avenue supermarket for groceries where she purchased $8.52 worth of groceries. Thank you for clearing up that $8.52 went $8.52. <laughs> I really need them. She left the store and vanished. Her body was found by a state trooper. She had been raped and strangled. They suspect with a bell. DNA evidence was left on her body. Witnesses claimed to have seen a red-headed girl pulled in a brown car around Conkey Avenue. The brown car did not match the description of the car that had followed Carmen on Interstate 490. Right here. <laughs> it's not red. It's red. Okay. No wonder why it's a mystery. Everything is alive. Okay. The third victim, Michelle Mean. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you your last name. Man? Manza? Manza? I've just Manza? been saying Manza. Manza? She's like corn. <gasps> She's corn. Michelle Manza is corn. <laughs> Say those things. It's okay. Scary. The third victim, Michelle Manza, was 10 years old when she disappeared. On November 26, 1973, from the streets in front of her home, she was found two days later in a rural stretch of road in Macedon, 15 miles from Rochester. She was last seen at Goodman Pisa by her uncle, who volunteered to give her a ride home. Michelle declined. Later on in that day, she went missing. A woman reported seeing a young girl resembling Michelle sitting in a car at a fast food restaurant in Penfield. A man was seen walking toward the car with a bag of food from the restaurant. Michelle's op autopsy revealed she'd eaten a hamburger. That was a very random, like, last <laughs> meal. Like, she didn't expect it to be her last meal. If you think about it, she did not expect that to be her last year. So, the guy that picked her up was probably like, Oh, you want some food? And she's like, I don't know you, but I want a hamburger. And she ate a hamburger as her last meal. Like, I know. I'm just trying to make it better. Okay, also that evening. Okay. Sorry, should I have these? <laughs> <laughs> also that evening, a man stopped along Route 350 50 in Walworth after he saw a car stopped with an apparent flat tire. A girl resembling Michelle sat in that car. The man with the flat tire made it apparent he wanted no help. Okay. So, um, is it time for some theories? I think it is. Ooh, ooh, ooh okay, okay, okay. So before we get into theories, um, I feel like it's important to know, um, this is stated by the Democrat and Chronicle, 
None of the victims lived in a household with both parents. Each had learning difficulties. Each was Roman Catholic. Each disappeared in late afternoon. Each likely was abducted by someone in a car. And no one saw the girls kidnapped, despite the busy neighborhoods where they lived. Also, each girl was assaulted and strangled. The following theories are presented by AlteredDimensions.com, a website that wrote an article on the case and looked into possible suspects. While hundreds of people were questioned, the killer was never caught. Dennis Termini, a local fireman considered to be a person interested in the case, was cleared in 2007 by DNA testing. He committed suicide months after the killings by shooting himself in the head with a pistol after police cornered him for an arrest related to the rape of a teenager. His car matched the description of a car used in the abductions, and police poisoned that his fireman suit, which he always carried with him, could have been donned in order to gain the trust of the victims. In the case of Carmen Golan, her uncle was also considered a suspect until his suicide in 1991. Miguel Hull, Colón had left, his, left the area and traveled to Puerto Rico shortly after the murder. Police found a doll in his car and suspected that the vehicle had been wiped clean. Miguel later returned to New York and was questioned, but never charged with the murder. In 1991, Miguel committed suicide inside his Radio Street home after police were called to the scene for a domestic dispute complaint. Miguel shot and wounded his wife and brother-in-law and called the called for the police to kill him and then shot himself. There's a theory that the killer was a local math tutor. Police also found white cat hair on all three bodies. They also note that the letters C, M, and W are the third, thirteenth, and twenty-third letters of the alphabet. It was done by the Strangler of the Hills. Born May 22nd, 1951, Kenneth Alessio Bianchi had a rough childhood as he was given up for adoption at just two weeks old. After his adoption at three months old by Frances Sialino and her husband Nicholas, his life seemed to be set up for a better start. Or at least so they thought. From an early age, Bianchi suffered from profound troubles. His adopted mother described him as a mythomaniac, also known as a person who compulsively lies, and a concealer since birth. Oftentimes, while growing up, Bianchi's penchant behavior for daydreams put him in a trance, and he fell behind his school, even though his intelligence was well above the average. Bianchi suffered from many health issues, such as epilepsy and incontinence, a common issue among many serial killers, surprisingly. This experience reportedly humiliated him, which could have led to his food later on. Along with his physical problems, Ken also experienced passive aggressive behavior. Kenneth continued his schooling up until 1971 when he graduated from Gates Chili High School. That's where the theory begins. The first victim who was murdered was Carmen Cohen, who was dropped in Chile. She was found raped and strangled off of the road in Chile in a more secluded area of wood. Bianchi graduated from Gates Chili High School, so he would have been familiar with the area and a good place to have dropped his first victim. Recall that when he was young, he had felt humiliated from the genital exam given to him, which paired with his passive aggressive behaviors, likely would have led to it. Time-wise, since this likely would have hopefully been the first time he had raped someone, he may have not wanted to be found, so it might have led him to murdering the victims. Another point to me is that with mental illnesses, a lot of the time they are actually paired with things, although passive aggressive behaviors aren't exactly a mental illness, unless this type of something, they tend to be paired with one another. So, as we were creating this theory, we believed that the person could have been OCD. We believe Kenneth was OCD because he was adopted at three months old. Three girls were murdered. All first letters of their three word alliterations Carmen Colin Chili, Michelle Means a Macedon, Wanda Walkowitz Webster, one, two, three. They're all three. And 
said with OCD, people tend to have a good number, such as like three or five, and that's what they'll count to. And counting is a very specific behavior people will do. So having that being said, this could be a good theory. Or at least a psychological diagnosis of another problem he may have had, which kind of led to these as well. It should also be mentioned that the girl's name, the number of the letter of the first letter of their alliterations have three in them. So C is the third letter of the alphabet, M is the 13th letter of the alphabet, and W is the 23rd word letter of the alphabet. So that's the theory. Wait, so what if they were like a game? So you're saying that if the uh, multiple suspects could have been working together? Yeah. So Kenneth Bianchi, Carmen Colon's uncle, and Dennis Torini? Yeah, like they all work together. That's interesting. Yeah, like Carmen Colon's uncle. Colon, I mean Cologne, I'm sorry. Her uncle ironically shot himself a couple days after the murder. Although, of course, it was family. That could have been kind of fishy because, you know, it was like really soon. Who's that? Yeah. Her uncle did. Oh, I thought it was 1970. No, 1970. Um. I thought it was 1971. Scratch that part. I know one of them killed himself like days after. Yeah, it was Dennis for me. Who was Dennis for me? Who was Dennis for me? Okay, they killed himself right after. Okay, so we're going to start that part again. Well, they like almost all of them killed themselves. Or at least killed Yeah. Besides... Did Kenneth be on No. He was sentenced to death because he moved to Los Angeles in 1977? Yeah, around 1977 he ended up moving to California and he committed his famous hillside strangling murders. Which also ties in to the fact that, you know, he had strangled all the girls and raped them. That was stated in the previous theory. So what if he also, which that theory also corresponds with the theory of Joseph Nassau, who was one of the main suspects until he was proven not to have been the killer because of DNA evidence. Although he might have not been the killer, there could have been killers. Which brings us to this theory, like, what if more than one person was there for the execution? There were multiple cars that were spotted following these girls. So unless they all had more than one car each, which I doubt because, yeah. <laughs> um, there must have been something happening where there was more than one person. Yes, which all of them seem to have some evidence against them, but not all evidence against them. Yes. And it connects them all because um, with Joseph Nasso and Kenneth Bianchi, they both lived in Rochester and then moved to California at some point. Yeah. I didn't even think of that part. That is so weird. What if they all teamed up for the strangling thing too? Yeah, because um, I think all of them that committed a crime, it was through strangulation. And, and then right. Kenneth was the one yeah, they raped too. Because just NASA raped and strangled as well. True. Oh, so I think um, the people that were like kind of thinking of this theory is Dennis Tr. Tristan? Termini. Dennis Termini, Joseph Nasso, um, Kenneth Bianchi, and possibly um, Miguel Cologne. Um, as well as it always, it could be a factor of Ken's Bianchi did have a partner in the Hillside Strangler, Hillside Stranglers case, so 
they could also be involved. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Wow. I should look into this. <laughs> Alright, well I think that wraps up the amount of time we have because we're being rushed. <laughs> um, so until our next unsolved case. <laughs> unfigured out case, don't you mean? Oh yes. Uh, until our next unfigured out case. I'm Cora. And I'm Amber. And this was BuzzFeed Unfigured Out. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. <laughs> Hit that subscribe button down below.